Hello, I'm Dr. Pierre Simon, and it's great being back with you as we conclude this series, Embracing the Unfamiliar. I hope you've enjoyed it. Today is our conclusion of it. We're talking about not being afraid today. Sort of summing up all of this, that fear of the unknown, those scary things that we run through our minds constantly telling, oh, what's going to happen if we do this, or when, where, what, who, what, you know, I mean, it's Crossing the street can be very difficult if you have a fear of the unknown. And that starts normal in early age, but it should dissipate as you increase in confidence. And we'll talk a little bit about ways of dissipating that this, uh, today on this concluding subject of embracing the unfamiliar, navigating that abyss, you know, that darkness, the, that, you know, that, that scary place of fear and unknown that requires confidence, it requires courage, it requires a, a sense of, I guess we could say, I know I can do it. Yeah, I know I can get through it. I have hope that I can make it. And if we think of it that way, it makes it a little easier to get through it. And as I said last time, um, they don't know exactly why these, this fear of the unknown becomes so strong inside of us in our, in our thinking. Uh, for some, it might be a medical reason. There, there are certainly medical reasons for just about anything. Uh, but for most people, it's more psychological. It's more in the way you think, uh, the way you feel, uh, so mental and emotional. Uh, how do we zero in on that? How do we improve on that? How do we strengthen the mental and emotional? Well, the secular world gives you these uh, objectives to carry out. Uh, uh, and in those objectives, okay, you do this, you do that, you uh, think this, you think that, and so on and so forth. And that works for some. But adding to that, to strengthen that, to make it more powerful, you might say, we've got to delve into the spiritual. We have to delve into faith in God through Jesus Christ. If we delve into evidence-based experiences with God, that strengthens the cognitive, behavioral modeling that we're taught in the secular world. That profound spiritual foundation that we need to build is important in helping get through this embracing the unfamiliar, navigating the fears of the unknown. Helen Keller's insights at the beginning of this series reminded us that facing our fears is not just an act of bravery, but a necessity for growth and proper safety and uh, security, um, giving us significance, giving us safety, security, giving us a sense of satisfaction. However, this journey won't be done alone. You can't do it by yourself. It just doesn't work. And I'm sure there's a rarity where someone can do it by themselves, but that's that's not the rule of thumb. That, that's not what is most effective for most people. Not being alone, embracing people, embracing things, embracing activities and so on, embracing experiences, but most of all, spiritually embracing God. So this journey is not to be done alone by embracing God's remedy of salvation through Jesus Christ. Individuals are offered a blueprint for transformation. Now, you can have faith in other religions, let's say, uh, and, and that faith, as we spoke of uh, before, the bridge that you build of faith to get to that other side, to get beyond that fear uh, and, and into this new area. Um, if it's a faith bridge that's built with evidence, um, with experiential evidence, it's a stronger bridge. 
if it's built with just imaginations, uh, it's a weak bridge. It's, it's a bridge that's uh, made of planks uh, and, as I may have said before, filled with termites and whatever else. You may get to the other side, but that bridge is going to crumble. It's not going to last. And when you get to that other side, that other community, that other place, it's hard to get back to your identity, that original identity of who you used to be before the fear took over. Because the, the faith bridge crumbled away. It wasn't based on evidence, on truths. It was based on fantasies or um, little bits of truth, but not the actual truths. We want to build that strong bridge to get over beyond growing our identity, expanding our horizons, reaching our potential that we that were intended to reach in God's creation uh, of our identity inside the darkness of the mother's womb. And we want that bridge to remain so we can go back. We have the freedom to go back and forth if we choose. And sometimes we may get across and say, okay, I'm here. I've grown enough and all that. I need to get back to me and that my identity. And now I need to build this other bridge to this other community or this other career, this other job, this other group, of whatever it might be. Okay, I can do that because I'm building it in the same manner that I built the first bridge of faith, uh, and it's going to be strong and so on. And then I have the freedom of going back and forth and visiting these other places and so on and uh, crossing the streets, as, uh, so to speak. I can do that because the faith bridge is a bridge built on evidence, on truths. And we have that in Christianity. We have that coming out of the Bible. We have that because all the historical evidence has proven it to be true. The promises, the prophecies, everything has come true up to our day and time. And as I've said many times before, no other religion in the world can make that claim. They don't have that evidence to prove them that's themselves. We do. And we can prove it not only through the history in the past, but we can prove it through what we're seeing happening today. Those, ex those events that are occurring around the world today, all spoken of in the Bible, all predicted to happen. And some, even to the very day from the day that it was predicted, have, have happened. No other religion in the world can make that claim. So that's a stronger faith bridge, a trust bridge, a confidence bridge that you're building in expanding your horizons, in getting through and in navigating your fear of the unknown. So it's a journey that's not going to be done alone. And when you reach out and you're able to cling to that faith, uh, that hope, that trust, that confidence, you can do anything. You can get through anything. And as you know, as Bible scripture tells us, you know, our belief in Jesus, we can do all things. All things are possible. This path equips us to confront our fears and transform them to in, in, into catalysts that uh, uh, deepen our spiritual walk, deepen our enlightenment, deepen our experiences. The duality of fear serves as both a guardian and a barrier. So there's pros and cons to fear. As a guardian, fear alerts us to potential dangers, guiding us to safety and preserving our well-being. Walking across the street when I was young, and I, I don't know, I always look back and I baffle, I'm baffled, you know, I'm thinking, well, why did my parents let me walk across the street? You know, when I was so young, I'd go to elementary school and they had a motel on the beach in Daytona Beach. And I would walk home alone uh, from the elementary school. It wasn't that far away, but uh, still, you know, eight, nine years old and, and walk across Atlantic Avenue. Now I was supposed to whistle 
and they were supposed to hear me and come and get me and bring me across the street. But oftentimes I'd be whistling and nobody would come. And so I would, you know, go across the street on my own. And, and at that time, Atlantic Avenue was just two lanes. Uh, and today it's four lanes and much busier, of course. But I had to learn to walk across the street. At first it's fearful. At first it's, oh my gosh, you know. But as you experience it day after day, you become more confident more trusting that you can do it. Uh, you realize, okay, I'm learning that if the cars are far away, it's safer to go ahead and go. I'm learning that if there's more cars, you know, wait till there's less cars. I'm learning that, yeah, I did it yesterday. I did it the day before. I can do it again. And before you know it, you don't even think of the fear anymore. You just are able to do it. That's normal fear. And that fear is there for a purpose. It's to help us to grow. It's to give us that confidence. So it acts as a guardian uh, that alerts us to those potential dangers. And that's a good thing. It's a natural and necessary emotion that has protected humans through the ages, ensuring survival, caution, and, and facing uncertainties, those, those unknowns. On the other side, however, when fear becomes a barrier, it restricts growth, hinders faith, and prevents individuals from stepping into the fullness God intended for you, your potential. Fear restricts your potential. And if you think about it, everyone has that potential of allowing the fear to control them. And yet everyone has the liberty or the freedom to choose. Am I going to resist this? Am I going to learn from my fear experiences so that I can grow into a place of not having that same fear anymore? And in this context, Discernment and faith become very important. Discernment is the God-given ability to understand the root of our fears, distinguishing between protective and destructive ones. Uh, if I let walking across the street uh, control me, uh, the fear of walking across the street control me, it's destructive. It's tearing me down. It's holding me back. But if I allow myself to grow through the experience, learn from each, each experience, remind myself I've done it before, I can do it again, and remember what I've learned to keep the cars far away when you, when you start going across the street, I can do it. And so it protects me. It's not obstructive. Discernment or judgment, because discernment is basically judgment, involves a deep spiritual insight guided by Holy, the Holy Spirit. You can follow um, patterns uh, of thought. You can think right, and you can even do right. But if you don't put it together, if it doesn't make sense to you, then it's hard to repeat spirituality or being having a, a faith base helps it acts like a glue it puts the doing and the thinking and the doing together it holds it together it, it bonds it makes it stronger so discernment involves a deep spiritual insight guided by the holy spirit to see beyond the surface of thoughts and emotions and recognize the underlying issues that need to be addressed. Why am I afraid to walk across the street? What reasons do I have to be afraid to walk across the street? And how can I conquer those? How can I dispute those reasons that I'm giving myself of that fear of walking across the street? The Bible speaks to this in Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 to 10, where Paul prays 
for love to abound with knowledge. So how do I do that? Well, I have to gain knowledge. So I have to gain, get as much information as I can about walking across the street in helping me to be able to be confident that I can do it. And depth of insight, so that's the confidence that it's building within me. I now kind of understand the dynamics. It makes sense. There's insight uh, occurring there. So believers can discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Faith. Faith is important. Faith is trust. Faith is confidence. Faith is also an experience. And when I put all that together, it makes it a little bit easier to take that next step. Faith then is a catalyst for transformation or change. It's an assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. I can't see myself at the other side of the street when I'm getting ready to walk across the street, but I have faith and I have memories that I did it before. Uh, I don't see it right now, but I believe it to be true. I believe I can do it. I don't see it. So it's a conviction of things not seen, an assurance that I have hope that I can do it. Faith empowers believers to trust in God's promises and believe in His plan for salvation and transformation despite fear. Faith, trust, or confidence enables us to see fear not as a insurmountable barrier, something impossible, but a catalyst for spiritual deepening. Something that's going to make us better. Something that's going to help us to grow. Something that's going to add to us, not take away from us. When we confront our fears with faith, a little something extra that helps the thinking and doing stick together, become stronger, when we confront our fears with faith, we open ourselves to God's transformative power or changing power, renewing power, changing us, making us better, allowing Him to work within us to bring healing, growth, and enlightenment. It does make you smarter, if you believe it or not. This transformative journey through faith doesn't mean the absence of fear, as we were talking about earlier. We do need a healthy fear, a safe fear, a guardian fear, but rather the mastery over it. I'm in control of the fear. I'm choosing what to determine is unsafe versus safe. What can I do versus what I shouldn't do? It's about learning to move forward despite fear and trusting God's sovereignty and goodness. I want to move forward because I'm choosing to. He's all-powerful. He's, he's all-knowing. He, he, he's in control of everything. And yet, He still allows me to make the choice. So, He gives me the truth in love well, here's what you've got to do, here's what needs to be done, or here's what you're capable of doing. I'll help you with it. I'll be walking with you through it. Don't be afraid. And, and whatever happens, I'm going to help you get through it. And, and you know, if the worst happens, you've got a place to go with me for that's going to be great for eternity. And, and you'll be you know, even happier uh, at that time than ever before. Okay, I'll choose to take that little risk. Um, I, I'm confident that I can do it now. No matter what happens, it's going to turn out okay. The story of David and Goliath is a potent illustration to that truth. Armed with faith in God, David confronted his fear. He confronted that, that big guy in the, all in armor who's scaring everybody. Uh, and he was able to face that fear and carry it out through faith. His victory and testament to the power of faith or confidence or trust 
over fear demonstrates that when we place our trust in God, there's no obstacle too significant to overcome. If I'm building my bridge of faith with those planks that I spoke of earlier, and I get to that other side, I can get to that other side, but that, it, that bridge is going to crumble. It's not going to last when adversity strikes on the other side when difficulties occur on the other side. The evidence to keep the bridge strong, the truths to keep the bridge strong are not there. And it crumbles. And now I'm trapped on the other side, having to do or be whatever is intended of me on that side. I've lost my identity because I have no access to come back to that identity that I had originally of who I am making me a better person. I'm now that robot over here. Armed with faith in God, David was able to get through that difficulty. So his victory is a testament to faith. It's a it's an example. And so all the New Testament, all the Old Testament and New Testament, but we look back on the Old Testament, those stories are there for a reason to teach us, to give us those experiences. And, and then we add to them and we learn from them. In practical terms, this transformation journey involves regular engagement with the Word of God. So I can't just say, okay, yeah, I believe. No, I got to keep working on it. I have to keep building it. I have to keep strengthening it. And we do that through prayer. We, we do it through cultivating uh, a community of faith. Uh, so it's not alone. It's with others. It's being encouraged by others and it's encouraging others. It's that support that gives us the help when we're going through tough times or when there's difficulties, but it's also strengthening us and motivating us, giving us even more hope and growing love within us as we volunteer or give of ourselves to others who are dealing with maybe issues we've dealt with and now we're helping them, now we're encouraging them, now we're just maybe being an example for them uh, to give them hope that if we did this, they can do it too. It's continuing that process of change where continually surrendering our fears to God, seeking his wisdom and guidance, and stepping out in faith or confidence, even when, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure, should I go across the street? Uh, it looks a little busy here. Um, well, I'll be patient for a moment. I'll talk to God. Hey, what do you think, Lord? Uh, well, maybe you can create a little gap here and uh, slow down the traffic so I can get across. And you know, before you know it, that, you know, th that happens. By embracing God's remedy of salvation through Jesus Christ, individuals are offered a blueprint for transformation and equipped with tools to confront and transform those fears through discernment and faith, so judgment and faith, what once was a barrier or barriers become catalysts for spiritual deepening and enlightening. So I'm now uh, being given a little, little more energy, a little more power, a little more motivation to take the next step. And in taking the next step, I'm learning, I'm growing. This journey is marked by profound trust in God's plan, a willingness to confront those challenges and transformative power of faith to change our lives. The Bible offers a lot of guidance in this, and that's why spiritually it's helpful to fall in love with God, draw closer to Him, read your Bible, learn more about those spiritual things. If you don't have an answer, if something is confusing in the Bible, well, ask someone who knows. Look it up, do a search on, on the internet. Uh, all the answers, many of the answers, maybe not all the answers, but many of the answers are there. 
there's always an answer for a question. Sometimes it might take a little while to get that answer, but there's always an answer for those questions. Look at what the scientists do. You know, they have a theory. So they have, in that, there's questions and thoughts about this theory, and then they start working on proving it out, finding evidence to prove it out. And once they have the evidence, they can repeat the theory over and over again, and they say, ah, this is true, see what happens. It's no different. If you have a question, if you have an, un, uh, an, answer, an answer you're not getting from something in, in scripture, don't, don't just say, well, I'm not going to read that anymore, or I'm not going to uh, think about that, or I'm just going to throw out the Old Testament and I'm just not going to pay attention to it. No, the answers are there for all those things you might have questions for. Start seeking out those answers. Don't just take the word of somebody else who says, oh, yeah, it's not important. Don't, you know, it's, it's crazy or it's this or it's that. No, everything has a purpose there of why it's going on. Everything has a purpose of why I'm walking across the street and how I'm walking across the street and what I'm paying attention to in these cars and why that car looks like it's faster than the other car, but they're still going at the same speed. Okay, now I understand. I've been explained why that happens. So just because it looks different doesn't mean that it's not going to get here just as quick. Makes sense now because I receive the answers that I needed, but I don't get those answers if I don't ask. The power of God's peace and the assurance of his presence, even in the darkest of valleys, he gives us those answers in scripture and in life experiences and directly through his spirit in us. And believe me, you don't have to be a Christian to hear God. He'll speak to you in ways that you'll understand when you need to have that understanding or you're asking for that understanding. Engaging with these scriptures, prayer and fellowship can strengthen and encourage those seeking to overcome fears through faith. Embracing that fear of the unknown, that fear of the unfamiliar becomes a journey of faith. I keep saying faith for a reason. I'm digging it in deeper by continuing to say faith, trust, hope, confidence. We need all of that. And if we give that, if we make those efforts, that gets stronger in us. The more you do something, the stronger it becomes. Faith then grows. The more you exercise faith, the more it grows within you. It's an, a testament to the transformative power of God's love and salvation. It's an invitation to step out, to take those risks, healthy risks, to trust in God's plan and to allow the, the, our fears to lead us to a deeper understanding, allowing that fear walking across the street to lead us to the other side, to where we want to go, uh, allowing that uh, confidence to grow so that I don't have a sleepless night uh, worrying about going, crossing the street tomorrow, uh, allowing me to feel more confident in the day, to do good in school and all that, to not be worrying about crossing the street when I go home. Uh, it's, it's building confidence, and that's what faith, that's the faith we want to help us in growing and being enlightened in many ways. Move forward. Move forward, not in fear and apprehension, but move forward with assurance that comes through faith. Embrace your fears as stepping stones. One step. Crossing the street, I had to take one step, then another step. But in those steps, there was hope. I'd be able to get to the other side. I'd be able to take the next step. So embrace your fears as stepping stones rather than stumbling blocks, guided by the light of Christ's love and path of salvation. In doing so, you'll not only navigate the abyss of the unknown, but emerge more vigorous. Uh, you know, okay, I, I've done it. You know, I've, I'm excited now. I've, I've made it across the street. <sighs> You know, I'm more vigorous at that point. I'm more resilient at that point. And spiritually, I'm more enlightened. God help me. 
God walked with me. I made it. Ready to face whatever challenges lie ahead with grace and yeah, courage. I can do it again. The Bible tells us this. And take a moment to just rest and, and soak this in. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but I'm reading it from a paraphrase of the Remedy Bible. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about how the future will turn out or where your next meal will come from or about what you'll wear. Life is not built to operate on the survival of the fittest principle, constantly seeking to get food for yourself or the latest clothes. Look at the birds. They don't worry about planting or harvest time or storing food in the barns because your heavenly father is constantly giving of himself to provide to them, uh, to give them what they need. Are you not much more valuable than the birds? I'm going to pause a moment. The other day I was looking at pictures of animals and, and you just don't see the colors. Um, and, 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 the, and the various animals that, that are out there, especially birds, so colorful, so beautiful. And, and I sat and I looked at those pictures and I thought, wow, look how beautiful God has made those birds or those animals. And look at the colors, look at the street, look at the variations uh, of, of how they display themselves and so on. That's not by accident. That's not coming from a rock or a mud. That's a design. How can you make a design out of nothing? How can something alive come out of something not alive? If God can do that for the animals, for the birds, what's he going to do for you if you ask him, if you reach out? to him for that help. Who of you, as the scripture goes on to say, who of you by worrying has improved their life or added even a single hour of it? Why waste energy worrying about your clothes or anything else for that matter? Look at the lilies of the field. They don't sow or weave. Yet I tell you that Solomon in his most magnificent robes was not dressed as one of these if that's how God clothes the grass in the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, will he not do much more for you? Oh, how you trust him so little. Stop worrying, the scripture tells us here. Stop worrying all the time, saying, oh, where will we get groceries? What's there to drink? What will we wear? This morning, I was thinking, what am I going to wear? I keep a limited amount of different clothes, so I don't have to think too much about what to wear. So, but what, what am I going to wear today? The pagans who don't know God are constantly preoccupied with getting for self, seeking to survive at all costs. It's me-oriented, egocentric, self-absorbed. But your heavenly Father, it goes on to say, knows all your needs and longs to provide them. You're a parent. Most of you are parents. You love your children. You long to meet their needs. You, it gives you joy to give them joy, especially when they're little. Maybe not so much as they get older, but when they're little. And then, you know, believe it or not, yes, I got older boys. When I can make them happy, it makes me happy still. That's what we do as loving parents. It gives us joy. And that's the same thing with God. It gives him joy to meet your needs. He wants you to embrace his kingdom, the scripture goes on to say, of giving. So seek first and live in harmony with God's kingdom of giving. If you're not in harmony, you're resisting. You're giving pushback. You're not receiving because you're resisting. God's kingdom of giving and all its righteousness, so all its goodness, 
and all your needs will be met as well. Stop worrying about how the future will turn out. Don't weigh yourselves down with imaginary future problems. You can't change those imaginary future problems. If you've done right up to this point, and chances are it's going to follow through tomorrow. And whatever may happen that you weren't planning on because of your experiences and your trust in God, your faith, you'll work it out. You always do. You're here now. You're listening to this. You got to this point. That means everything that's happened to you in the past, you've gotten through. Bad things and good things, you've gotten through. You made it to this point. Did worrying help you to make it? Or did going through it, experiencing it, get you to the other side, to where you are today? Don't weigh yourselves down, the scripture goes, it goes on to say, uh, with these apprehensions and, and worries of tomorrow, of this imaginary future problems that haven't even happened yet. And trust God with your future. I trust him, I'll get across the street. I trust him, I'll turn, be able to turn left in, in heavy traffic. And if not, I'll turn right and go around and, and get to where I'm going a little differently. But I'll trust him, I'm going to get there. I've experienced it, I've learned from it, and because he's at my side, I'm confident I can do it again. That's getting rid of that fear of the unfamiliar, navigating through the fear of the unknown. This passage I read from uh, the Bible in uh, the Remedy Bible, which is a paraphrase, comes from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. Uh, read it yourself soak in, you know, I always tell people, read a few sentences and pause. Don't just read, but read and pause. How does this apply to me? What do you want me to know, God, about these words that I just read? How, uh, is there an experience I've had that connects with these words? Is there something to learn regarding these words? Is there something for the future regarding what you're teaching me here? How can I grow through these few sentences that I've just read, and then I read on. Do that. You'll be surprised how much more the Bible will be adding to your wisdom, to your insights, to your knowledge and understanding by doing it that way. Well, this concludes our series in embracing the unfamiliar. Next time we'll be getting into another subject. I hope this was enjoyable for you. May your troubles be minor, blessings more, and happiness come through your door. God bless.